Welcome to First Church. We're glad all of you are here today. It's a great day to be in the house of the Lord. And we welcome you on this Mother's Day. And so uh, let's prepare our hearts now to worship together.
Guide my feet. Guide my feet. Guide my feet. For I don't want to run this race in vain. Hold my hand. Hold my hand, hold my hand, for I don't want to run this race in vain. I'm your child, I'm your child. I'm your child. I run this race, for I don't want to run this race in vain. Stand by me. While I run this race. Stand by me. While I run this race. Stand by me. For I don't want to run this race in vain. Guide my feet, O oh Lord. Guide my feet. Guide my feet, O oh Lord. Guide my feet. Guide my feet while I run this race. Guide my feet while I run this race. Guide my feet while I run this race, for I don't want to run this race in vain. Oh yes, my Lord, my feet while I run this race, Lord, guide my feet while I run this race. Guide my feet while I run this race. I don't want to run this race in vain. Lord, I don't want to run this race in vain. So, Lord God.
your neighbors and offer a sign of peace and reconciliation. It's great to see all of you today. We remind you that we glorify God here by connecting people to Jesus Christ through spiritual nourishment and dynamic outreach. And we're glad all of you are here today. Our ushers are bringing down the attendance pads. And as they do that, we thank them. Thank you for the information that you provide us there. We appreciate that uh, so much. While they're doing that, I want you to get out your bulletin for just a second. A couple of things that I'd like to lift up to you. Uh, first, I want to remind uh, those of you uh, that would uh, care to come Thursday to the Triple L gathering at 1130. Leanne Scott and Pat uh, Smith are going to share a little bit about mental health uh, issues related for old, uh, the older generation. And uh, we're excited about this program and look forward to that. And then uh, next Sunday, May 19th, is the first of our two times a year that we uh, offer our gifts uh, to the uh, Franklin County uh, emergency food pantry. Friends, I want to say, make a statement about this. Um, earlier this year, we thought maybe we kind of got a handle on this and things were going well. But there has been such an influx of need uh, that we, uh, this emergency food pantry has been overwhelmed. Nearly 3,000 meals have been, uh, been offered so far this year. Over uh, almost 1,000 of those are going to children, hungry children right here in our Frankfurt community. And so uh, we want to support this. I invite you to write a check. They can get more with a dollar than you and I can. Uh, write a check to them, uh, not to the church, but to them. And uh, you can bring that next week if you care to. Or certainly there's a list there of items that uh, they could use. So feel free to do that. Uh, thirdly, I want to mention the note there about a Courageous Conversations. I told you before General Conference met back in February that we would get together and have some conversation about what had taken place. Well, it's time to do that. And uh, we, move, we, we will, on June the 2nd and 9th, in those afternoons, uh, gather together to have some conversation. You'll learn uh, exact information about what's taken place. And uh, I hope that you'll come and share your thoughts and, and be there for that and support one another in, in, as we grow in our church. This week, don't forget, those of you on SPR, don't forget, you've got a meeting tomorrow night at 5.30. And then uh, trustees, you have a meeting at 6. The bulletin says 6.30, but that's been moved to 6. So I wanted to remind you about that. Let's go to the Lord now in prayer. Loving and holy God, we gather in this place today and we humble ourselves before you. We recognize that you are our God, you are the creator, the author of life, death, and everlasting life. And what an honor it is today to pray and to give thanks to you for all things. And we glorify your name. Today, as we uh, celebrate Woman's Day, we give, a, we give thanks for your creation. And Lord, we pray today that as we worship here, that what we do, you will be pleased with us and our spirit. Lord, as we uh, pray, we pray for the needs of our community of faith. We have a lot that are sick and hurting, not able to be with us today. Some are recovering, some are doing treatment. But God, once again, as always, we pray that you, through the name of Jesus Christ, will bring your healing power upon so many that need it right now. We thank you that you comfort us in times of grief and that you, God, are the gift of wisdom for us. In life, already today, many decisions have been made. And we wonder, have we contemplated, Lord, 
your input in those decisions. We pray, Holy God, that your wisdom would be upon us. We want to be your church, Holy One. And we thank you that you give us a vision, an opportunity for us to be your people. And so, Lord, as we worship in this hour, we pray that our hearts and our minds will be open to you. Speak to us. Touch our lives. Make a profound impact upon us, O oh God. And now, bless us. Bless us as we uh, pray for those that lead us, not only in our church, but in our community, in our commonwealth, in our nation, and in our world. And Lord, as always, protect those who protect us. And thank you for the freedom we have to worship here today. We offer this now in the name of him who taught us that when we pray, we should say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to bid uh, all our moms a happy Mother's Day. I'm looking forward here in about an hour and a half to being with my own mother. Uh, she's 87 years old, and uh, she gets out every day, works in her lily beds, and she does lilies, uh, day lilies, and uh, she, she's still active, and I feel very blessed to still have her. I wonder how many mothers we have here today. Moms, will you stand for a moment? And remain standing. Yeah, great. Wow. Will you greet all of you today and, and welcome you? And then I want to ask all the women to please stand. All women, if you would, please stand. All the women. We're glad. And, and the girls, too. Yeah, you can stand. That's great. You know, we're grateful that God has created you today, and we give thanks. And we want to offer a simple prayer, a prayer uh, of litany for women. And so let me invite you to join me responsively in your bulletin. Lord, we remember the mothers who have gone before us. For their love, sacrifice, struggle, and joy, we thank you. Lord, we remember the mothers from Scripture who are part of the story as we are part of your story. For their courage, faith, love, and fierceness, we thank you. And Lord, we remember those who have not given birth to us, but are mothers to us. For their gift of themselves that they have given you, we thank you. And for those who struggle with fertility, for those that society labels as less with their childlessness. For those women who have lost children. For their tears, their strength, and their love. We thank you. Holy God, we do thank you for women of all, all walks of life. And how they have touched our lives. And now we lift them to you, Lord, in, in, an, in, a, in an attitude of gratitude. For the blessing that you have given us through them. And we offer this now in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thanks very much. You may be seated. I want to invite our children to come forward now. Good morning. How are you all today? As we celebrate Mother's Day, we think about grandmothers and aunts and sisters and teachers and lots of women that make a difference in our lives. Um, how do we show love to people? Got any ideas? What do you think? We can tell them with our words that we love them. What else can we do to show people that we love them? Any ideas? No ideas? Have you ever, just because, cleaned up your room when nobody told you to? None of you have ever done that? 
did you do that? Good. When we do that, people, people feel loved. Whoever usually cleans that up feels loved when we do that, right? Have you ever just given somebody a hug just because? Is that another way we can feel love? Any other things we can feel love? How we can show love? What do you think of? Give them kisses. Yeah, if they're in our family, we can give them kisses. There are lots of ways that we can show love. So I want to challenge you today for the women in your life that you love today, try to show them. Because sometimes, I don't think all of you, you don't have a very big bank account, right? You can't just go buy something for them, right? But we can do things. We can give them hugs. We can clean up. We can take, take their, uh, their dishes to the kitchen for them. We can, do, we can get along with our brothers and sisters. Can we do that? That shows love. That shows love. But you know what else? Jesus is like this too. I want to tell you from 1 John 4, verse 21, it says, This commandment we have from God, from Jesus. Those who claim to love God ought to love their brother and sister also. So... The way we show God, God wants to see how we love. And the way we show God that we love God is by loving other people. Another verse says, 2 Corinthians 5, 9 says, Whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please Jesus. So that's what I want to remind us on Mother's Day. And then we can think about it on Father's Day. But every day. We can think about showing our love, and by showing God's love to other people, that makes God happy, just like showing our love to the women in our lives makes them happy. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for mothers and grandmothers and sisters and teachers and all the women in our lives, aunts, all the women in our lives that show us love and that we love. Help us show love to them today. But help us even more show love to you today in how we treat other people. In Jesus' name, amen. You can go back to your seat or you can come with me to Little Church. Let's stand and sing together in our hymnal number 473, Lead Me, Lord. Let's stand and sing. Let us pray. Once again, holy God, we seek your presence of your spirit in us as the word is revealed. May our hearts be open to receive what you offer us today. And we pray this in the name of the living Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Have you ever gone someplace that you've never been before? You know, on a vacation kind of thing? And have you ever tried to go see all the sights on your own? <laughs> you know, I found that when I do that, I usually miss a lot of things. Now, you could get a map, and that would help some. But you know, the best way to really help you is to have a personal guide, someone who's been there, somebody maybe who's even lived there all of their lives. And the same is true for our life, my friends. Our choice of guidance will determine how effective, how meaningful, how significant, and how, how uh, fulfilling our life is. And so today, we're continuing our series on saying yes to God's future for your life. 
And I want to talk a little bit about how to choose the right guide for our life. Now, there are plenty of guides out there. We, we call them life coaches. We call them, you know, they're all, all kinds of names. But God has provided us with a guide book, the Bible, and a personal guide, the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit can help us interpret the guide book. And I don't know if you've ever thought about this or not. It came up in our confirmation class. But somebody asked, why did Jesus go back to heaven? And it's an interesting question because after he came to earth, why didn't he just stay here? Why didn't he just stay on earth so we could have a visible, physical model? Well, Jesus said, and I'm paraphrasing here, but he said it actually is better for me to, to leave. And my question is, how could anything be, be better than having Jesus guiding us personally through our lives? He said, because when I leave, I'm going to send a helper, the counselor, the advocate. And the Bible calls the Holy Spirit by a lot of different names. But Jesus said, I'm going to send my spirit back to earth and it will remind you of all that I've said. So again, I'm going to ask, how in the world is the Holy Spirit, having the Holy Spirit better than Jesus? How is the Holy Spirit going to help us make the right decisions in life? How does the Holy Spirit want to be our guide, our, counsel, our, per, our guidance counselor? Huh? Not just have a guide book, but actually have a personal counselor or a personal helper through life. Why did Jesus go back to heaven? Well, Jesus said in John 16, verse 7, and this verse is not in your notes, and I hope you've got those out and ready to go. But he said, it's actually best for you that I go away, because if I don't, the helper won't come to you. But, I will, but if I do go away, he will come, because I will send him to you. And when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you. And there's that guidance part that we're talking about. The Holy Spirit, the helper, the companion, should be the guide for our life. So I'm going to ask you again. How is having the Holy Spirit better than Jesus? Well, let me explain to you that Jesus, when, when he was, uh, well, he was limited when he was on this earth to one location. In other words, he, when he was here in his physical body, he couldn't be everywhere. He couldn't be in Jerusalem and Hong Kong. He couldn't even be in Lexington and Frankfurt, you know, at the same time. But now the Holy Spirit can be everywhere. The Holy Spirit can be with all of us, help all of us, be in all of us at the same time. And friends, this is a big deal. This is why Jesus said, it's better for me to leave. So my spirit is going to be with you. So how does the Holy Spirit want to guide our lives? Well, this is one, I think, of the most important things that you and I can learn about our, about our faith life. Uh, because the Bible says in Romans 8, verse 14, only those who are led by the Holy Spirit are children of God. Did you hear that? Only those who are led by the Holy Spirit are children of God. Are you led by the Spirit of God? You know, the proof that we are believers, that we're children of God, that we're sons and daughters of God, is that the Holy Spirit guides us and leads us. Now let me explain this. When we first start off in the Christian life, we may not be very good at this. I like to, I like to uh, liken it to answering the telephone. You know, the phone rings, you say, hello? And you don't know whose voice that is on the other end. And finally you say, uh, excuse me, who, who is this? Right? You've done that? And yet, you know, as your relationship grows with that person, then you begin to recognize their voice on the other line. Well, after a while, we're able to do the same thing with the Holy Spirit. We sometimes may say, oh, that's God. That's God speaking to me. And God puts impressions in our hearts and our minds. And that's the way God leads us. So let me show you. Got your note pages? This is going to be really important today. Got your notes? This is how it works when the Holy Spirit guides us. Ready? Number one, if we listen to the Holy Spirit, it'll help us know what we need to know. You might write that down. Know what we need to know. It'll help us know what we need to know. And that, my friends, is the first thing the Holy Spirit is sent to do, to help us know what we need to know. Now, friends, there are things that we need to know in life that if we don't know, we're going to fail. And here's the cool thing about the Holy Spirit. If we learn to let the Holy Spirit lead us on a daily basis, it not only helps us know what we need to know, but it helps us know what we need to know when we need to know it. it it's not. Are you with me? Some of you are going, what? 
But it's not like the Holy Spirit comes down and says, I'm going to teach you all of this information, and I sure hope you can use some of it sometime. You know, that's not the way it works. The Holy Spirit brings to our mind what we need to know when we need to know it. For instance, have you ever read a Bible verse? I don't know, maybe, maybe in your morning devotions you have your Bible verse and you read it, and later that same day, something pops up and that verse is that, you ever done that? Anybody? Anybody? Well, it, that happened to me once. <laughs> Surely that's happened to you, right? Somebody just said to me, said, Phil, uh, say a prayer for me because I'm going to Sunday school. It's all about the Holy Spirit is my God. What? You know, uh, some people read stuff, you know, might read a book. And later that same week, that, uh, something you read may pop back out and you'll say, wow, I just read that yesterday. Friends, I'm going to tell you that is the Holy Spirit at work. Now you can stay, sit there and say, oh, Phil, that's just a coincidence. Really? You know, I, I, don't think, I don't think that's the way it works. I dare say that there are people in this room, even though you maybe didn't want to raise your hand, there are a lot of examples of where the Holy Spirit has spoken to us, and in no time we've had an experience where we see the work of the Holy Spirit. Again, I'm going to go back to, in, in this scripture, this is not in your notes, but in John 16, verse 13, it says, When the truth comes, He will lead you with all truth. The Holy Spirit, my friends, gives us the truth that we need. And we need the truth because if we're going to build our life on a bunch of lies, then our foundation is going to crumble, okay? Now, when the Holy Spirit tells us what we need to know, that's called revelation. And revelation certainly is important in our lives. And the Bible is about God's complete revelation to humankind. But God also reveals many, many things to us through the Holy Spirit. A good example of that is in Luke 2, verse 26, uh, about a man named Simeon. I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but it says in the Scripture there, it had been revealed to Simeon by the Holy Spirit. And Simeon, what Simeon had been told there, was that you're not going to die until you see the Messiah. Now, he would have never known that, friends, except the Holy Spirit had to tell him that. And so the Holy Spirit will tell us things that we need to know. Now, I want to go on to the second point, but I'm going to stay with the story of Simeon. Number two, the Holy Spirit will get us where we need to go. Write that down. It'll get us where we need to go. Get us where we need to go. And there are some places that you and I need to get in our life, and there's no way we're ever going to get there on our own. We need the help of the Holy Spirit. See, it's like God has put a dream. That's the word I use. But God has put a dream in your heart, a desire in your heart, a vision in your heart, whatever word you want to use. But God has put a dream of where we're going to be someday, and there's no way we're going to get there on our own. But, but if we let the Holy Spirit guide us, it will guide us to places we've never imagined. God says, I have set before you an open door, and it's an open door that nobody can close. And I'm going to say a lot more about that in the weeks to come. But let me go back to Simeon for a moment. In Luke 2, verse 27, the Spirit led Simeon to go to the temple. And you know when he got there, do you know what he saw at the temple? He saw Joseph, Mary, and one other person. Jesus. He saw the Messiah before he died, see? When he got there, Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus are right there. And Simeon became the man given the highest privilege of dedicating the baby Jesus to God in the temple of Jerusalem. Now, friends, listen. If Simeon had not been sensitive to the Holy Spirit, he'd, just been, he'd probably just been home watching Wheel of Fortune. You know? But he got an impression and the Holy Spirit said, go to the temple. And when he gets there, lo and behold, Joseph and Mary and baby Jesus are there. Simeon would have missed that. And my family, I'm telling you this because if we're not listening to the guidance of the Holy Spirit, there are things that we're going to miss in our life, and I don't want you to miss it. I, I think about another quick example in Acts 8, verse 29. It says, Then the Spirit told Philip, Go catch a ride with that chariot. You all remember that story? Philip is walking down the dusty road one day, just minding his own business. He's JWA, just walking along. And all of a sudden, a guy comes uh, by in a chariot, which means this guy really is a man of wealth or power or influence or probably some kind of an official. Anyway, Philip sees this black man go by in, in a chariot, and, he, and we later find out that he is a major leader in, from Ethiopia. 
And as that chariot goes by, the Holy Spirit says to Philip, go catch a ride on that chariot. And so he runs up to the chariot, and he sees this guy's got a book in his hand. And Philip says, what are you reading? And the guy goes, well, it's the book of Isaiah, but I don't understand it. And Philip knows now why he's there. He says, well, I know it. I understand it. What part of it are you reading? And he turns out he's reading the passage in Isaiah about how the Messiah is going to come one day. And Philip goes, you won't believe this. You know, that guy has already come. They crucified him about a week ago, and just and, and he's resurrected from the dead. And he, he's over there in Jerusalem walking around in the streets right now. It is really cool. And the guy says, tell me more. <laughs> and guess what? Philip gets in the chariot, and they talk. And the Ethiopian leader says, what do I need to do next? And Philip says, you need to be baptized as a symbol that you have said, I'm all in. I've accepted Christ as my Savior. And so that uh, they do, they pull over, they find a creek, they baptize this leader, and that man took Christianity back to Africa. And that's why even today, the oldest Christian churches you'll find in Africa are in Ethiopia. Why? Because somebody listened to the Holy Spirit a long time ago. Everybody get it? All right. Now, a lot more examples of that, but was, we're going to move on. Number three, if we listen to the Holy Spirit, it, it, will, it will help us Say the right things. Say the right things. Write that down. Say the right things. That's number three. And I only mention this today because, friends, we live today in a world of words. And a lot of times those words cause conflict with those that we love. In Mark 12, verse 36, it says the Holy Spirit led David to say, and I want to say that if you're a Christian if it, today, uh, the Holy Spirit has used you probably without you even knowing it. It puts an idea in your mind, and you say it, and it affects somebody in some mighty way. And you may not have even known it. You may not have known that they needed to hear that word. You might be sitting in a Sunday school class or in a prayer group somewhere, or maybe just at work, and you say something kind of off the, off the cuff, and you don't even, you know, honestly, you don't even remember saying it. But it was like, bing, the light bulb came on for somebody else. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. You know, I've had people in church say, Phil, feels like you're preaching right at me. Well, I am. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I've had people say, Phil, I feel like you're reading my mail. Well, I don't need to. And let me tell you why. A long time ago, I learned that I needed to pray before I prepared a sermon. And I start praying. I pray that I try to listen to the Holy Spirit. Every time I do this, I pray, God, I don't even know what you need me to say. But I need you to put your words in me because you know who's going to be here that Sunday. Friends, listen. <laughs> Truth is, I'm not the brightest bulb on the string, you know? But I have chosen to depend on the Holy Spirit. And I have learned this. If we choose to depend on the Holy Spirit, it's like a muscle, you know? The more you use it, the stronger it gets. And, and, and this is not about just me doing it. Friends, everybody can understand this. In the beginning, it may not work well, and that's okay. And that happened to me. But I've been trying to walk with the Lord a, long, a lot of years, and I've heard the still, small voice of God. And through experience, I think I know better when I hear the voice of God. We all can know that, and we all should know that. The longer we spend time in the Scriptures, we will know the Holy Spirit of God when He speaks to us. I think about Matthew 10, there, verse 19. Do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time you'll be given what to say, for it will not be you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. My family, let me tell you something. This is going to be true whether you're preaching a sermon or, or if you're going to a job interview. This is true if you've got to have a difficult talk with a member of your family or if you've got to testify in court, you know? Uh, this is why the Holy Spirit is here. To know what we need to know to get us to go, get us where we need to go and to say what we need to say. It. Let me share with you one more. The fourth thing there, and this is a biggie, is we have to learn to, the, we listen to the Holy Spirit to help us wait for God's perfect timing. Wait for God's perfect timing. Wait for God's perfect timing. And friends, I got I to confess again. I didn't realize the importance of this in my younger days. But I have discovered it 
Timing is everything. I, um, I wish I had a baseball. Anybody? David? Wow, thank you, brother. Man, what a coach. He's always ready, isn't he? Look at that. That's pretty cool. In America, all across America right now, there are baseball games going on everywhere. Uh, you can go out here to the fields at our high schools uh, or wherever. But you know what? Everybody's throwing the same size ball. Everybody. You can go to New Yankee Stadium, same size ball. They're standing on the same size mound. And they're standing the same distance from the batter. But the difference between a Hall of Fame pitcher and an amateur is timing. It's the timing of how they throw the ball. Isn't that something? Now, in knowing the right timing, a speech can be a success or a dud, or a project can be a success or a dud. You can die, do the right thing at the wrong time, and it won't matter, you know? Maybe God gave you an idea to start a new business, or you thought, well, I've got this, uh, this idea, I'm going to start it right now. You know, there's no way that we can always know the right timing. But God, there's a way that God can know the right timing. In fact, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes, there's a right time and a right, 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 there's a right time and a right way to do everything. And so if we're going to wait on God's timing, we have to trust and we have to say, God, you are the right time and the right way to do everything, to bring the right business, the right person, the right land, the right uh, on and on and on. And when the Holy Spirit is, is guiding us, Friends, you know what? Delays. How many of you like to be delayed? Yeah, that's what I thought. But delays won't bother us near as much. Uh, they won't, they won't, uh, we won't become discouraged. In, in Galatians 5, the Apostle Paul said, we are led by the Spirit to wait. Sometimes the Spirit says go. Sometimes the Spirit says wait. We are led by the Spirit to wait. How? In the confident hope of righteousness through faith. Let me ask you, friends, how many of you are waiting? How many are wait, are of you are waiting on something in your life right now? Are you talking to the Holy Spirit while you're waiting, or, or are you just out there waiting? You know, I highly recommend that you take time to talk. Talk to the Holy Spirit while you're waiting. It will help you understand where to go, what to know, where to, uh, what to say, and how long to wait. Okay, so that's, that's, that's important. But how does it work? How does this happen? How does the Spirit come down and guide me? Let's finish this up. I'm going to show you what I do. This is just one way, but I, I, I want to show you how I try to let the Holy Spirit lead me. Six quick things. Ready? We're going to go fast. The first one is you've got to pause and be quiet. Write that down. Pause and be quiet. My family, we cannot hear the Holy Spirit very well when we're on the run. And in Psalm 37, verse 7, it says, Be still and know that I am God. Shut up and sit down. Okay, <laughs> you know, that's what it said. Pause and be quiet. And I'll tell you, if you get frustrated, there's too much noise going on around you and you can't find that quiet place, go to the bathroom and just sit on the throne, you know, and pause and be quiet. <laughs> I'm serious. In Psalm 30, in quietness and confidence will be your strength. And so we got to pause and be quiet. Number two, keep going here. Humbly ask the Holy Spirit to guide you. Humbly ask the Holy Spirit to guide you. Friends, we have not because we ask not. We've got to ask in a humble spirit. And that's the attitude that the Holy Spirit is looking for us in, for in us. In Psalm 25, verse 9, it says, God guides the humble in what is right and teaches them His way. My family, the more humble we are, the more we're going to hear the Holy Spirit. God guides the humble, not those who think they've got it all figured out. In Psalm 27, 11, it says, Teach me, Lord, what you, need me, what you want me to do and lead me down the right path. Give me that direction. There's the guidance. Number three. Ready? Number three. Be willing to do what the Spirit says. Be willing to do what the Spirit says. And this is a toughie. Because if we approach God with, well, God, I'll do what you say, but first you've got to tell me, and then I'll figure out if I want to do it or not. That's not, you're not going to hear from the Spirit if that's your attitude. We've got to want to be led. There's, we start with a craving, with a desire, with a longing to follow and do what God wants us to do. Number four, keep going. Look to God's Word. Look to God's Word. Look to God's Word. You know, friends, the Bible, in Psalm, uh, what is it, 20, 119, 
Um, your, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Remember that? Um, we have the guide, but we also need the guide book. We need them both. And the Bible says, guide my steps by your word so that I'll not be overcome by any evil. Number five. Keep going. Expect. Expect the Holy Spirit's guidance and faith. Expect the Spirit's guidance and faith. Expect. That's the big word. Expect the Holy Spirit's guidance and faith. You know, if we're not expecting the Holy Spirit to tell us anything, then why would the Holy Spirit speak, right? I mean, God listens to our faith. Look at this scripture. This is super important. In James 1, verses 5 and 6, it says, If you want to know what God really wants you to do, ask Him, and He will gladly tell you. For He is always ready to give a bounty, bountiful supply of wisdom to all who ask Him. But be sure that you really expect Him to tell you. If you don't ask in faith, don't expect the Lord to give you any solid answer. Hmm. We trust in God's guidance because God, you know, is never wrong. But we have to expect and believe, right? And the last one, number six. We're back to this delay or waiting. The Spirit will help us wait for God's response. Wait for God's response. Write that down. Wait for God's response. My family, try not to get in a hurry. Try not to be in a rush. I, I get it. I'm there with you too much of the time. But don't come with that attitude. Well, God hadn't told me yet, so I'm going to go ahead and start this business, or I'm going to go ahead and fulfill that obligation. No, just wait. Just wait a second. Wait for God's response. You know, the Bible says God does speak sometimes one way and sometimes another, even though people may not understand it. That's from Job. My family, we're going to talk more about this in the weeks ahead. But I just want to say today, if you want a guide for your life, and if you're willing to allow the Holy Spirit to be that personal guide, it'll make so many great things happen in your life, and especially it'll make your waiting clearer and clearer and clearer. Let's pray together. Merciful and holy God, we thank you for your word today. And thank you what you have brought to us as we oftentimes do wait. We don't like to wait for anything. We don't like to wait for time. We don't like to wait in line. We don't like to wait even at the stoplight. But God, this is a time where we need to just pause and be still. And recognize that you are God. And we're not. And so let your spirit come among us. Be with us, Lord. And we give you thanks. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, as we respond to the word, our ushers are preparing to come forward now. So let's prepare ourselves to offer our gifts and our tithes to Almighty God. Pray with me. God, we come to you today on a day in which we celebrate women, a day in which we are revered for our ability to nurture and care for others, which is a true gift and we, we recognize that. But in the coming days, we ask that you give us strength to remind a nation that we are not only nurturers, but we are leaders, we are decision makers, and we have a voice a voice which we will continue to use to better and protect our family, our community, our nation, and ourselves. In your name we pray. Amen.
remain standing as we sing our closing hymn, number 580, verses 1 and 3 of Lord, or Lead On, O King Eternal. Let's sing together. God, we go from this place led by your spirit. And now thank you for your peace that passes all understanding. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. God bless all of you. Take time to greet one another before you go.